I, I am Joe Commissar. I'm the Assistant Director in Financial Management Services Department for uh, Capital Projects. I develop or help develop the, uh, the annual CIP for the city and also facilitate bond elections if they happen to occur, which they are certainly doing now. What I'd like to talk about today is the, uh, very briefly, the CIP development process. And, and the reason I want to talk about that is so that you know what the process is in the city. It's important for you to know that if it's July, this is going on. If it's, uh, if it's May, this is going on. And if you'd like to interject yourself, you have a feel for where that is. So we've got a pretty structured process put together that's important for you to understand. And then I want to talk about some of the 2014 bond highlights uh, that we have here today. Fort Worth uses a four-step process. We introduced it last year. We do the same thing every year in a repetitive kind of process. And the goal is to develop that comprehensive integrated plan that we, uh, that we link to the city's comprehensive plan. The city's comprehensive plan is the plan uh, that projects out 20 years, and it's important that our CIP be tied to that. Uh, we're looking at the funding, we look at how much money we have to spend, and then we develop the uh, CIP. All along that way, it's critical that we interact with you folks regularly and routinely to get your input. This is your Fort Worth. This is your opportunity to present um, information to us so that we know what you want. We, we serve you and work for you, uh, as you well know. And then if we need to, we hold a bond election, which, in fact, we need to do. This is, uh, very briefly, the four-step process. And you can see that January through April, we're developing projects. Uh, we have a summer CIP workshop with the City Council in June and July, uh, May, June time frame every year. Uh, and we, we, we go back to the City Council, ask them to verify the work that we're doing, make sure that we're on track. Then we use the fall to go out into the public uh, to solicit feedback. And we do that in conjunction with the comprehensive plan update. We did that last year. We had 17 meetings last fall. It was very successful in the sense that we were able to get feedback from you all on what you wanted. And then in December, November, December, we come back to the City Council and we say, okay, here's what we've got from the public. Is it okay? Is the CIP okay? And we ask for approval of the CIP. That's the process every year. So you know, you know that we're developing projects in the spring. We've got two City Council meetings a year, one in the summer, one in the winter, to talk about um, capital projects. And we're out in the public, uh, at public meetings typically in the fall. So if you want to interject yourself into that process, that's the way you can do that. You can see that we have had uh, public, meeting, or public meetings and city council meetings. I'm going to cover some highlights of those very quickly. So let's, that's the background on the CIDV development um, uh, process. And again, we can answer questions on those if you have those later. I want to talk about the specific bond program now that everybody's probably most interested in. And you're going to hear me say the word projects a lot today. And I want to emphasize that I'm talking about projects that are funded through your property tax. Um, there's a segment, a component of your property tax that's used to pay for certain projects, and those are the ones we're talking about. There's hundreds of other projects in the city that are paid for by water, your water bills, your stormwater bills, your aviation uh, has projects funded by the feds uh, through the FAA grants, things like that. We're not talking about those today. Those are ongoing. They're moving along. We're talking about those ones that are funded by your property tax. And I also want to emphasize that everything you hear today, uh, there is no tax rate increase associated with it. We're using money that we currently have. So no tax rate increase associated with anything you're hearing today. And I think that's an important uh, thing to know. Uh, we, we have a substantial need. We're one of the fastest growing cities in the nation, largest uh, uh, one of the largest met, uh, areas, some metropolitan areas in the state, and we're growing like crazy, as you've seen in the newspapers. And it's important that we uh, get, get infrastructure built to, um, to take care of the, the services that you need and the infrastructure that you need to, uh, to get your jobs done and just to, just to live. So we've had uh, four current programs, uh, the 2004 bond program, the 2008 program, and a couple of other ones in between and we're running out of money. This summer, we're gonna sell the very last of that money, and that money no longer exists. Those projects uh, will be underway this summer. So, we need additional dollars. Uh, I mentioned in, in the spring, we're talking to the departments about what it is that we need. They came back to us, and here's some macro numbers uh, on, in general categories about what, what's needed. You can see that by far the largest 
requirement in this city's transportation infrastructure. That's no surprise to anybody. Uh, it's critical that we, we have the streets and roads and road repairs necessary to get folks moving around the city. Uh, facilities, parks, uh, IT projects, and a variety of other cities, uh, city uh, economic development kinds of uh, projects as well as various services are also critically needed. And this adds up to a very large number, and you'll see in a moment that we don't have the money to pay for all this, so it's important that we pick the right projects as we go uh, through this process. And that's where we really need your help uh, as we're, as we're f winding down to, uh, to getting this list um, developed. Now, we wanted to, to, bu we wanted to build a formal way uh, to start this process. In the past, we haven't had uh, the opportunity to, um, we, have, we haven't had a structured process. We've just kind of started and said, let's go. But over the last uh, nine months, we've developed a very uh, strategic process to, to build a project list that we want to offer to you as a starting point for your deliberations on this whole thing. And very briefly, I will tell you that uh, department heads met several times. We brought in a consultant. We developed a matrix. And we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the best projects would be uh, for the city going forward. And so when you see this list, it's a result of the staff's work over many, many months to try to find the right uh, recommendations for the city. Now, naturally, we've been to city council several times and ask for their uh, guidance and direction. They've offered their input to this process. It's been tweaked. And so it's been a pretty comprehensive effort. Uh, but I want to mention some things about this list. It's very important that you understand that this list is, is just simply a recommendation to you. This is, our, uh, this is our subject matter expert, our staff's recommendation um, to where we think these projects uh, or where the dollars should be spent. However, it is in no way a final list, and it will not be a final list until December. We're going to go through this summer. Uh, Councilwoman Alan Gray mentioned the several meetings. I'll mention them again. We want your input. We're, we're soliciting your input. We want to know what you want. So when you see these lists, you have the option of tossing all the projects out, adding projects, increasing the scope of the projects, decreasing scope of the projects, anything is open uh, for discussion. So there's, this list is no way, shape, or form a final list. And it's really important that you understand that. And I'll talk about those milestones a little bit later. So your, your input is very valuable to us, and it's very critical to making good decisions. I mentioned that we'd been to city council several times over the last 18 months. Uh, this list has been tweaked. It's been generally determined to be OK. The city council has been pretty pretty direct with us and, and, and telling us what they wanted to see. They wanted to see a strong emphasis on transportation infrastructure. Keep that em emphasis the way you've had it. Find ways to provide higher allocations for parks projects. Uh, that's been a, a pretty, pretty uh, highly discussed subject as we've uh, run these lists by city council. And continue to find ways to partner with other entities, the ISDs, the counties, uh, and other private entities. If we can get their dollars in the mix, then, we, then our dollars will go farther. We can leverage our dollars, and, and that effort is underway full time. It's going on as we speak. It will not stop just because we've got this bond election going on. We're still going to try to find ways to partner with those folks so that we can free up dollars for other projects, and that will occur all the way through the rest of the year. And then, importantly, as we're doing today, stay out in the public and get input from the citizens on what they want. So this list, as I talked about now, which, which is not a final list, is broken down categorically this way. And I'll, I don't need to go into a lot of detail because I'll show you the projects in just a little bit. But what should stand out here is the very strong emphasis in transportation infrastructure. 70% of the available dollars that we have, we, we would recommend, um, go to uh, transportation infrastructure type projects. Obviously, we want your feedback on that. Um, that may or may not be what you want, but it seems to be um, the common theme as we go through the prior public meetings and the city council's discussions. And then the uh, significant uh, contribution to the parks projects. You can see $22 million here allocated to parks. The rest of the projects are distributed around the, the various categories, and I'll show you those in just a second. This is the project list, uh, the one that's not final. 
And uh, I just want to walk through it with you uh, briefly just to um, mention uh, a couple of highlights about the projects. The department heads are here. Uh, you know that. There's, they're set up outside with their displays. They can talk to you about detail on these projects or any other projects you'd like to see. So very briefly, uh, transportation infrastructure. I'll show you a breakdown a little bit, but you can imagine that's streets, roads, bridges, sidewalks, intersections, that sort of thing. Uh, we have a fire station 42, which is in South Fort Worth. It's down around Spinks Airport. Uh, the Holly Water Treatment Plant needs a service center. I will say simply that this piece of it leverages uh, $7 million in, of, of water money, which is how it got on this list in the first place. Uh, this is not the complete project cost, but this is all that the bond fund would be asked to pay. There's a facility up north uh, consisting of a library and a uh, thousand square feet for a municipal court kiosk complex. And um, again, the, the municipal court staff, Ms. Deirdre Emerson is here if you need additional detail on that. Uh, the downtown court, it requires an expansion. And so uh, we have got that in the bond program. Uh, the north part of Fort Worth above I-30 is serviced out of service centers in the south. And um, there's a need for a service center up north, that's what this would be. It, it would house transportation, public works, and parks folks. Um, the animal shelter in South Fort Worth, or not South Fort Worth, Central Fort Worth down 287 and 820 uh, needs an expansion to, to accommodate more capacity in a medical treatment facility. Um, Walsh Ranch uh, needs a fire station that's far west Fort Worth. A transit-oriented development is a, a development associated with the uh, tex, tex rail, the, the light rail that's coming into Fort Worth, and it's important that the infrastructure around those stations be developed. That's what that's all about. There is a playground equipment at 16 sites in the city, Heritage Plaza Park in downtown Fort Worth. You may you may recall that's closed and it has a fence around it. Uh, enhanced CFA funds; those are funds that we contribute to, to developers to encourage them to develop. Uh, there's, there's sometimes there's a gap in what they can do. We uh, help them with, uh, with their needs so that the, their projects can be uh, accomplished. Urban village improvements improves things like walkability around the city. Uh, streetscapes makes, makes places uh, nicer. Uh, Magnolia is a, a good example of that if you've been in that area. Uh, North Animal Shelter, again, there's nothing up there. Uh, they they're, uh, have a need. Oakland Express Library, that's a, an express library in this particular district uh, that uh, Councilwoman Alan Gray has championed, and she, uh, and I'm sure you all are aware that there's a need for that library here as well. Um, these other, uh, the remainder of the uh, projects here uh, are primarily parks related. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. The Parks and Walks and Trails is Quanta Parker Park. That's out w uh, east. Yeah, that would complete a park trail to uh, Lake Arlington. Uh, the rest, I say, as I say, are pretty self-explanatory, except for the public art component, which I'm going to talk to in just a little bit. Note that that's $5.8 million. And those are, those are art projects that are related to the capital projects that we're talking about here. This is the breakdown of the, the transportation line that I showed you earlier. Uh, you see the uh, various categories that I talked about. Street reconstruction rehab has its line and it's broken down to neighborhood streets and arterials and that's primarily repair of streets. And that's a pretty critical line as well. These are the, uh, this is a map, it's hard to see. There's a, there's a better map out here uh, in the lobby. But these are the arterials. These are the major roads around Fort Worth. You can see that they're distributed fairly well. Uh, there's a lot of dollars that go into that. $88 million worth of uh, construction of uh, arterials. As we went through the uh, council meetings, the council members brought up various things they still think we should look at and emphasize, so I wanted to bring those to your attention. There was discussion of Chisholm Trail Park improvements. Uh, there you saw Chisholm Trail on the prior slide. That is only half of what's required. Um, there's, some, there's some thought that the department can come up with additional dollars or private funding can come up with additional dollars, but the discussion is that if that's not possible, we may need to look at additional funding there. Same for Como Community Center, which is a $7 million facility replacement. What we have in the bond program recommendation to you is half that. There's a hope that private, par uh, private partnerships can come up with the other 3.5, but perhaps not. 
uh, citywide community center renovations, Z Boaz, Park Rockwood, golf course, and citywide trail enhancements. Those were, t those were brought to our attention as things we might want to take a look at, so we offer them to you as suggestions for, for additional projects. I do want to mention very briefly the public art program, simply to say that it is integrated into our capital projects program. These are the goals that they have. You're familiar with a variety of projects. Ms. Martha Peters is here. She has a display out here about how these projects have, have incorporated public art in the past. Uh, we fund those projects uh, by ordinance. The ordinance currently calls for 2% of the capital project dollars that would go to public art. And so for 2014, 2% of our capacity, which is 292 million, would be $5.8 million. There's discussion about whether the 2% is right or not. Uh, is that the right amount? Uh, so we'll take your input on it. Would you like to see more? Would you like to see less? Would you like to see it go away? Any aspect of this is uh, discussable as well. So if you have thoughts on that, let us know. So what do we need from you? What we really need from you is your feedback. We really need to know what your thoughts are on what projects that we have. Remember, we have $292 million in capacity, and that's it. That's all we have. So we've allocated that through the projects that you see, which are not defined at all. I mean, those are not final. But I would ask that if you have ideas, for example, if you want to see you know, two or three new projects, that you help us understand how they might be paid for. You know, what, what would go away or be reduced in order to pay for those? Because we're still limited just like you are in your checkbook, to whatever's in there. For us, it's $292 million. That sounds like a lot, but it's really not in the, in the, in the business of construction. So, but we have to have your input. It's critical to, um, to what we're doing. These are the variety of ways that we have, uh, we have set up so that you can talk to us. Uh, public meetings, obviously. I'll, I'll talk to more about those in a second. E-media, we'll take, I'll take email inputs. My business cards and my colleagues, Kristen Glass, are on the sign-up sheet if you want to email us. That's information. Social media uh, and the crowdsourcing, uh, Facebook, Twitter, you can get us that way. Crowdsourcing is new. We've got an application called MindMixer back here where you can enter into the system and express your, your uh, opinions that way. You can get to it through our website or you can spend time here today. Ms. Michelle Goot is here. She's our communications officer in the city. Should be happy to walk you through how to use this. It's really a fantastic opportunity to interface with us uh, this way at this time. We have all kinds of written media, the publicity in the newspapers, that sort of thing. Uh, we really want your feed. We'll even take mail if you want to mail us uh, something and, and uh, let us know uh, about that. Just a quick word on the public meetings. You're obviously at one today. Uh, Ms. Allen Gray mentioned that the next one for this district is the 25th of July. Um, but there's a bunch of them. There's 19 currently scheduled, of which 16 are district-specific. And all that means is we're going to talk primarily about that, dis that district's projects. But you're welcome to any of them. If you want to come to any of these meetings, you're welcome. And the last three are citywide. Uh, all council members will be at those three. The mayor will be at those three. So you can come to one or all of those as well. You're welcome at any of them. If you leave today and you say, man, I forgot something, uh, and you want to express it in another public meeting, please come out and talk to us. Uh, you don't have to complete your thoughts today if you don't have them. You might take notes today and come back later. You're welcome at any one of these meetings. Quick look at the milestones, just so you know how the rest of the year is going to go. Between now and November 2nd, we're going to be doing public meetings. And I just showed you that schedule. That schedule is in the publicity that we're putting out on the, in the uh, vari various media. Uh, we got a compil in November. I'm going to take all that public input, everything that you tell me, and everybody else, all the ci other citizens, and all the other public meetings tells me. We're going to compile it, and we're going to shape the project list based on what you say, and we're going to bring it back to the city council on December 11th, and we're going to say, okay, we had the list, we went out as you've asked us to do, we've gotten this information, and this is what the new list looks like. Assuming that's okay, we'll spend the next month or so getting the the ballot and the ordinance and the propositions all, all worked out. And then in, on February 11th, the City Council will actually call for the election, which will be held on May 10th, 2014. So that's how that process is going to work. So nothing is going to be final until December. Nothing. So you, you can interject, you know, 
three times a week if you want between now and December. We'll take that information. It's important to us that we hear from you. But that's kind of the milestones that we, uh, that we have. What is the date of December? December 11th is the schedule at this time. 